Yes, Ben Traumas, welcome back. It's the Rezies podcast. I'll be honest, I forgot what number Episode it was. 27. 27. I'm going to say 27. I'm glad because someone's keeping count. Last week was 26, That's and it. I wear the number 26. That's how, how it works. works. Oh, um, we, should done, we should have done a big celebration for you. Well, we'll do a big celebration this week because we've got a big guest. Yes, we've got... Local um, boy, local boy. I brought, it's the Adelaide, Adelaide pod. Sorry, local Will. boy, local pod for the Czech man and Trey. We've got Ashton Moyer on the pod. Woo! Yeah. Thanks, guys. Happy to be here. <laughs> Happy to be here. So we... I don't know about you, Checkers, but I first met this lovely man at a gather round. I was uh, on a... It was a Sunday night. I bumped into a few friends I knew. And then they introduced me to Ashton. And I was like, oh, lovely to meet you, mate. Fuck, you're pretty tall. Like, um, what do you do? He's like, play footy, uh, playing for Glenelg. The, at the disrespect. <laughs> I, I knew nothing about Stanford footy. Oh, the well, Melbourne footy culture, it was, Hullery, 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 Hullery. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Oh, Even at Gather Round, it was all about Harley. I remember oh, he was walking crazy. laps at the. Uh, <laughs> he was at Norwood one day, and it was almost like the entire crowd's attention focused to Harley in the crowd. Oh, I was nuts! As like, was I was walking. sitting in the grandstand um, with uh, my manager, and we literally just watched him. Everyone just follow. Yeah, follow Harley. It was crazy to watch. Very and crazy. The next day, I wheeled up um, Instagram, and I saw a video of Ashton kicking on both feet from fifty meters out. Is this the AFL video? It yeah. is the AFL video, and it's. It's Cal Toomey saying, "Mate, this guy's this guy's a freak." And here, tell him it, to his face. Tell him he's a freak to his face. You are, you are a freak. <laughs> let's let's get right into it. Um, your resume. You played for Glenelg. You played a bit of senior footy, uh, AFL Academy, Adelaide Crows Academy, stateside for two years, and got here. Your senior debut. You kicked four goals three. Oh, for Glenelg. Yeah. Glenelg. Yeah. Oh, I thought so this is where he goes, he goes, oh, <laughs> first met Ashton at Gather Round. I was like, man, me and Shred knew about Ashton three years before that. Well, like, when, when he was were making you? headlines in the uh, in the local messenger and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the local messenger. Um, Gee whiz. Yeah. When and did Andy you, Capel was writing articles about him back in Andy 2016. Capel, yeah. <laughs> when did you first sort of hear about Ashton then? Uh, probably under 18's sample level. I mean, we were pretty in tune with the sample in Adelaide. Yeah. Um, because we're making a lot of content at the sample. So, yeah, it was, you're making some waves, you have to admit. Yeah, that bottom age year, this wasn't, I guess, wasn't too bad. Probably my better better year, I, I reckon. I've, the, I very strongly two. remember Cal Toomey came out and said, Ashton Moyer is going to be pick one in two yeah. years' time. So that was that was probably like where it first started gain, gain a lot of traction. And then it went downhill from there. Because <laughs> we, <had, laughs> we had like Lacocious, Rankin come through in the last few years, Connor Rosie, there's a lot of local talent going high in the draft. Horn well. Jason Horn went number one. I'm like shit. There's another kid coming through the system that's going to go number one. So these bloody SA boys, they brand them different these days. <laughs> what are they putting in chocolate milk? <laughs> Look at Trey. Yeah. He's, he's muscly under that under that t-shirt. He's got a six pack. No wonder he takes his shirt off all the time. <laughs> so we were touching on just before Cal Toomey um, had just number one pick. Unfortunately, you had a few injuries throughout uh, throughout last year, and you ended up in the draft slipping to uh, pick twenty nine. Did you feel? Coming into this year, do you feel any added pressure on that hype that you were touted as a number one pick? Or do you find it that it's almost refreshing because people are going to underrate you or there's not so much... You can just keep setting the bar. You've seen what's happened to Harley higher and how and much pressure can yeah. can land on the shoulders of a pick one. Do you think maybe now you've been picked up a bit later in the draft, you can sort of like surprise a few people? Yeah, well, I mean, there's obviously... There's still pressure. Um, like, no matter what pick you go, whether it's Harley at pick one or rookie listed like there's still pressure like, I can't imagine what Harley's been going through but um, oh, I like it personally uh, like you know trying to prove people wrong I guess people who don't think I can make it in this in this league and just trying to prove them wrong and show them what I can really do I just feel like I really thrive on it so when that article came out about you being pick one and all the attention started sort of sparking up in the Adelaide footy community how was it for you like going back to Glenelg or going back to your school and uh, you know did you get a bit extra attention did you get any comments did you did you feel some added pressure uh well actually about that like when i first found out i was actually at school like i was actually in english and that article came out and it was actually it was pretty cool at the time i won't lie to you um like obviously i'd be stoked mates and <laughs> i would have said to the like, english teacher can we analyze this fucking article <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, wa- I want to do an essay on this <laughs> yeah so like all my mates came up to me at lunch and that footy training after and you know trying to get into me about it not like in a bad way obviously it's a good way get your autograph get a few photos yeah, yeah that was obviously <laughs> piss taking that yeah. and stuff but um no i loved it personally i thought it was pretty cool and obviously first i reckon media sort of attention i guess i've had in my life so no i loved that it was cool 
What yeah. school did you go to? You know, like curious. Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart. Yeah. Very strong footy school. Great. I went from I Henley High, which was the the budget Sacred Heart. <laughs> yeah. On the footy well, field, well, they got a good footy academy. Good footy though. academy, but good we'd always academy. get pipped off by Sacred Heart. So we didn't even play you guys. You guys end up leaving our comp. Really? Like when we were year twelve. Like Jeez. we might have gone to private school comp. Henley's public, but oh, was there any yeah, yeah. other draft days from Sacred Heart that year? Yes, Will McCabe went to Hawthorne. Oh, Willie. Uh, Bodie Ryan. Uh, obviously went to Hawthorne as well. Uh, that's all I can. I think that's it. But we got a few coming next year. Got the Campos. Yeah, um, the Campo between and yeah. then Glenelg base. Well, you had a bit to do with them. With the with the Campos. Yeah, yeah, oh, you'd be yeah. I've, in tight. I've known them since primary school, kindergarten, and especially the Carlton uh, connection. Now it yeah. continues, doesn't it? No, it's so. great. They actually had a few weeks with us uh, in preseason. It's just so good having more familiar faces there, and it'd be pretty cool having them here next year. For a bit of clarity, it's Scott Camperiales, uh, they're twins. And they're, they're killing the, the league. They're so sort of like Ben King, Max King, sort of yeah. like... So will they yeah. both be eligible for um, father-son? I believe I think so, so yeah. yeah. I thought it was only one, but I think you can... Yeah. I think both can be father-son. Carlton have... I've heard on the grapevine that Carlton have enough points to lock them in. And yeah, I think they did that both. through this year's draft, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or last year's now. There's a few father-sons running around next year. you got Tyler Welsh... Yeah, um, playing for the Adelaide Reserves, and then you've got <laughs> Shreya's fist pumping. They breed them bloody well. <laughs> and then you got the Campos. I can't wait to see that matchup this year. The Campos and the uh, the Welsh. So does the Sample's gonna have a lot of media attention on this oh, year? Oh god, yeah, it's a good year. Sid Draper as well, who's projected at the moment, like you know, top five. Uh, got a couple other players. Kate Herbert um, is a bloody good player. So next couple of years are looking really strong. Do you have much uh, to do with Glenelg still? Do you contact them much or go back or you? Yeah, a fair yeah. bit. I knew you were pretty yeah. pretty involved there and like. Obviously, spent a fair bit of time there as well. And what was your club growing up? Plimpton. Yeah, Plimpton. It was just around the corner from Plimpton Bulldogs. The Bullies. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to the Plimpton Bulldogs. Yeah. Yes. Plimpton Bulldogs. I know a few of the Plimpton Bulldogs listen to the pod, so they might be tuning in. Yeah, there's a couple of Plimpton Bulldogs. Bryce Gibbs. Bryce Gibbs Plimpton came Bulldogs, out of Plimpton. Yeah. Uh, Bailey Williams from Bulldogs. Was he Plimpton Bulldogs? Yeah, oh, back wow. in the day. I didn't know that. Tom Does he Cleary, tune in? He doesn't tune in, no. no I'm just <laughs> to, more, more so the D-grade Plymouth Bulldogs are still at the club have been tuning in. I don't know if the uh, I don't know if Bryce Gibbs and Bailey have been listening. I know Ashton's been listening. Bailey, hopefully, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah, just send us a damn brother. <laughs> Let's talk about um, your process of the draft. Um, being a Glen Al boy, obviously, uh, was there much chat with Adelaide and Port? Uh, it was a fair bit. Um, I think it was kind of within that range uh, for the Crows. Obviously, Port had picked like 74 They had something. no picks. We had they Ari Schoenmaker on here. He was saying, we're asking about clubs that we interviewed me. He said, Port still interviewed me, but they didn't have a pick in the draft. Like they were like, yeah, it was. <laughs> did, yeah, did you weird. get interviewed by Port? Were they oh, following I you had, around? Um, no, I had a couple uh, with Port. I think that's just, just touching base and, and stuff, which is pretty cool. I uh, got to chat with Robbie Gray, who I've loved just, growing up. Oh, chatting man, for like huge. five yeah five to six years time just circling like just waiting for that, yeah. that contract to come yeah. up <laughs> yeah but I spoke with the Crows because they had um, what pick I think I had two picks before Carlton's pick yeah uh, and the you're end. in their academy as well oh, I was in there yeah I think that was that wasn't like a um, you know the cultural the culture one or, I don't know what that's what that's called but I wasn't in that I was just in the um, the 15s and 14s one so yeah but yeah I had a pretty good connection with them did a preseason uh, one week of preseason last year or two years ago now with them and uh, yeah I had a chat with them I think a week before the draft so you got to do a, a pre-season with Crows senior team yeah one week that so you're training still... with like Tex and everyone like that yeah through yeah. the AFL Academy who so was, who was the, the big the big, big ones there obviously in Adelaide I think for me if I was going to train with the Crows I know Shrey would probably be thinking like Rankin he's, yeah, he's he a big Rankin fan but who was, who was the one that blew you away at the Crows training Jordan Dawson yeah he's mm. insanely good like just even just his leadership like not just him as a footballer but him as a person and as a leader, it's just it's next level. So and you can tell why he's well one of the best players. Which in the shows comp. testament to why they whacked him straight into captain after yeah, one exactly. year, doesn't it? So yeah. come from the Crows Academy, had a little bit of a chat to Port, but Carlton were they were they hot in you? Were they talking to you? What was the clubs that were hitting you up the most? Yeah, so I spoke with Carlton a uh, week before the draft uh, as well. Uh, them and Crow, oh and Frio, sorry as well. They were the three clubs that spoke to me probably the most. Uh, and Richmond, sorry, I keep. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's right, right. That's right. Keep forgetting, but um, uh, and, and GWS yeah. and Collingwood and Brisbane. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> no, but that the whole league. They were the clubs that um taught to me most, I guess, pre-draft that week before it. Um, but I wasn't actually expecting to go on that first night. I was actually or hoping to um go on that second night because obviously nothing was really guaranteed. You know, could not get drafted at all. Like, true, there's always true. that chance. Um, well, that yeah, when we had Ari on, he was touted to go first night potentially and ended mm-hmm. up almost missing the entire draft. So, yeah, yeah the slide is were you worried a little bit about the slide? 
Oh, I mean, I was expecting you, to you slide, to be honest. Expecting like, to um, slide a little bit? Yeah. It's a bit yeah. hard to slide so much you don't get picked up when you're touted as a pick one. Yeah. Unless you do something really, really wrong, which mm -hmm. I, I don't think a little few, few little niggles in the year is not going to get you that low. Nah. But Yeah, Bloody but um, that night was just nuts. Like, I was, I've never felt... I couldn't really describe the emotion. It was really feeling like I was just so shaky and just so nervous, just sweating constantly, even though I wasn't expecting to go on that in that first <laughs> night. Up until I got a call from Mick Agresta, the uh, the recruiter, and just saying, you know, congratulations, mate. And, yeah. <laughs> what and, about the lead up in the day? Because it is a nighttime event. They make them wait yeah. all day. For oh, this. it was nuts. So I was really lucky. So my best mate, Jacob Ryan, you know, plays for Collingwood. Yeah. Um, he was really, really good. So he was with me for previous three days because he knew, like, obviously how nervous and nervous and stuff I was. So I stayed at his his house the night before, and we just kicked the footy all day. Just pretty much did everything to distract myself from from the draft and so he'd been through it before did you were you yeah. at his draft party last year yeah yeah yep. so you want to witness him get picked up and the sort of nerves he went through help you at all you reckon oh not really i mean i was nervous for him during that draft and pretty much doubled and tripled when i was uh when it was my draft year so um but yeah he was really good for me and just try and keep me distracted and it's nice. It's a, I'll scratch your back one year and then you scratch my back next year. And then we, yeah, it was like, it's good that you had a, a player that's not... Yeah, most of these boys, they come through the system and I guess it's may, maybe because you played a bit of underage, under 18s and stuff like that yeah. and you're quite quite in the team. But a lot of the players that go to the draft, they're only with their mates that are also in the draft. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they don't really have anyone to bounce off that's a bit more experienced or like can help them out in that way. So Yeah, that's why he was really good. Especially like the whole the whole 2023 year. Just... um just help me out like what do i do here how can i bounce back from this like little stuff like that it was really good yeah nice so your first day at carlton obviously there's a few of you uh going in yourself uh billy wilson i'm gonna forget a few maddie carroll maddie carroll rob monaghan yeah lots of boys coming in um what's the what's the first memory you've got of walking in at icon park oh walking in and seeing our names just uh on top of like one of the whiteboards or something, just like welcome to Carlton, and they had all of our names. That's the first That's memory special. I have, which was it was unbelievable. And walking and seeing Nick Newman was there as well, which is yeah, pretty is. cool. So Nick Newman, yeah, <laughs> Newman. I was, I was yeah. really like Paddy Cripps, Michael yeah. Boss. <laughs> no, Nick Newman's a good one. No, but he he's, he was so good. Like, yeah, got to meet him and met a couple of the coaches, a couple of the boys, and yeah, they were it was so good. Who that was first the day was unreal. Who was the player that surprised you the most when you got to the club? I know. Heading in, you might have a player that you have, like, think Cripper's going to be such a leader or mm. or Charlie's going to be so tall and muscly and, and yeah. inti not intimidating, but, like, look sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but who was someone that surprised you when you got there? You're like, Jesus, changed my perception on that person or that player. Uh, Jordan, well, two players. Um, one, Matty Owies. Uh, his leadership is just on another level. Like, he's really, really good and someone to really, really learn off um, in regard to, obviously, being a leader, a uh, good person. And in the footy aspect as well, just his reaction time, uh, his forward craft. Um, and as a forward, I really like to, to learn off that. And as a player, Jordan Boyd, he's unbelievable. I think he's probably one of the best halfbacks in the comp. His kicking is just on another level. And um, he's a great guy too. So This is going to be incredible yeah. because I asked my housemate Connor Rogers last night before he went to bed. Massive Carlton enough I don't know. You'll meet him eventually. He be, he's a diehard Ashton Moyer fan already. So I said, go Ashton on. What do you want me to ask him about? He goes, ah... Uh, Number one, ask me how Carlton are going to go this year. Number two, can you ask me about Jordan Boyd? <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> he is the biggest Jordan Boyd nut. Yeah, he logs into SEN like four times a week and goes, I think Jordan Boyd should be in the team. And he's really? like, he's the biggest. He loves Jordan wow. Boyd. They're yeah, going to block his phone number from SEN soon. Yeah. But, well, it's, yeah. it's something that Carlton faithfuls love. They, they are yeah. like, so from outside of Carlton, I don't know a heap about him until he moved to Melbourne and learned a little bit more, but yeah. didn't know much about the team other than the five stars you see on TV all the time. Yeah, but yeah. we get here and all the Carlton fans are raving about David Cunningham, Jordan Boyd, Cottrell, Owies, all these smaller names mm. that probably don't get the attention on the TV oh, times yeah. we see. But yeah, the Jordan Boyd one really shocked me. This is like the Carlton fans are so hot on him being a he's, best 22. He's so good. Like, I don't know if you watch, you watch a Geelong game. Oh my God. He was, I personally, I thought he was best on. Like, he was so good. But it's so he's good ready for a big breakout is what we're tipping is that, is that what you reckon yeah that's yeah. what I reckon he's got the headband on too and um Cosy P kept trying to take it off him the other night oh really <laughs> at the, we were sitting in the pocket and could, we were about 10 metres from it and kept hearing the, the little biff that they had because Cosy yeah. kept coming up behind him and taking his headband off oh no way <laughs> yeah I, I couldn't hear that I was up, obviously up in the balcony I couldn't 
Couldn't really see much. Speaking of Ashton being up on the balcony, yeah, oh. this is something we have to address. Maybe yeah. pull your phone out. I don't know if you've got a phone case on it yet. Oh, you should see it. It's actually, it's actually not that bad. It's what happened? What happened with same. the phone at the it's all, it's at the community fine. series? It looks pretty good, Nick. Yeah, it's actually fine. Like it's working normally. Uh, I dropped it off the balcony. You're at Icon Park. Yeah, we see you up on the balcony. We're waving up to you and a few of the boys up on the balcony, and then suddenly you're down on the ground floor amongst the fans, yeah. and the security guards at the over holding a phone, going, "Who does this belong to?" And I see a lot of back and forth from the security in Ashton Moyer, and he's like, it's my phone. It's like, And I'm thinking, what the fuck's happened here? <laughs> and we confront, we confronted Ashton. We're like, what happened, mate? He's like, I just dropped my bloody phone off the balcony. It was so bad. Like, <laughs> Into the crowd. I was just sitting, sitting on the balcony watching the game. Um, I'm just surprised I didn't hit anyone in the first place. Like, yeah, I br- bring out my pocket um, to show one of the boys, I don't know, I don't know what we are talking about, something, and then just juggled it off like just so clumsily and then just looked there and then just went smack right under the concrete and what were your thoughts for that happen? was it done done for yeah done have to buy a new phone <laughs> with $30 in my account somehow that is yeah. so promising if my phone yeah. broke did I have like a oh, service station knock yeah. here for yeah. a couple of weeks yeah, exactly <laughs> but I was like oh this is not good and I just stood there in shock for the first like 20 seconds and all the boys like go get it go get it so I'm like, all right all right went down and worked normally all the cameras fine everything Crazy. fine i saw it like going half it must have been the case yeah, yeah. The life proof case, case or it's unbreakable that thing no nah, it is it was 20 bucks from jb half <laughs> it's, it's yeah you don't need, don't the, you don't need the 300 dollars case. i do have the 300 dollars <laughs> life proof case so. <laughs> yeah don't need it unbreakable i don't know how I'm surprised it didn't hit anyone. That's my yeah. That's my first concern. Shit's gonna hit someone in the head. <laughs> well, speak, I, I was about the community challenge game. Is it what is it called? The community series. Community it's series. The preseason game. Um, you played the game before. The, we went yeah. to watch Carlton versus Melbourne at Icon Park. You played the game before, and there's only one photo I've seen of you in that game, and you're tagging Clayton Oliver. In the oh yeah yeah nah he was tagging me he was tagging you yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. no. I like it it's very <laughs> witting shots very witty from the young man <laughs> nah I'm joking how was that experience oh, yeah, Clary's obviously a gun of the com and your first real hit out at Icon Park yeah, yeah. first midfield minutes in a while as well so he was, it was really good to go against one of the best in the competition and he was actually really good like it was a trial obviously it was a trial game but um he was really giving me a lot of tips um in regards to midfield craft like. So he was speaking to you, like, helping you out? Yeah, yeah. I thought he was taking a piss, in the f- like, the first time. He's like, keep on the move, don't try and engage, like, little stuff like that. I'm like, this bloke's taking the piss. Like, he has to be. And then he kept helping. I was like, oh, shit, like, this is good. Like, I can actually use this. And That's the stuff he's really- been damning to Shrey because they're good mates now. He's, um, he bumped, really? in, he bumped into Clary. <laughs> Clary was walking around the crowd and everyone's sort of hushing because it's like, Clary's like top five mids in the comp. Oh, like, gotcha. And yeah. he's walking around Icon Park and it was very similar to Harley Reid at Norwood and everyone's like, whew, it's Clary. Just looking. Yeah. And then everyone went silent and then he goes, Shrey. Oh, no mate. way. <laughs> so I was like, I'm good, it. man. Oh, and then chucked him a follow on Insta and everything. So now they're best mates. Yeah. No way. Now they're just having but midfield meetings on, <laughs> on DMs and stuff. So <laughs> you thought he was taking the piss because I sometimes I do this to my opposition. I'll, yeah. I'll be like, mate, you're going to have to jump because you, you're shit. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're doing no good. You're going to have to run a bit harder, you shit. Yeah, exactly. But he was actually trying to help you out in the game. He was yeah, he's generally you- trying to help me and it actually ended up working. Like, And I've got, got a clearance. He's like, S- see what happens. So, you know, when you yeah. move your feet, like, Try and be smart, and it was so good. It's a great, great player too. Like, you gonna yeah. reach out at all for more coaching? Clary one on one. You could hire him down at Gosh's or something. Oh, I'd be nice, but I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give, me t- give me a text. But. So your first time in the midfield? Yeah, well, first in a while. In a while. Yeah. Is that so. is that something the coaches did to sort of build you as a midfielder, or was it just you getting a bit more of the footy? Uh, I think yeah, it's just build build my game just to try and um, be more versatile, I guess. To um, obviously have that forward craft and play as a forward, but end up. I guess developing into a midfielder that can play forward so uh, obviously doing what Nat Fife what Cripper all those boys do they're obviously big midfielders that can go go down forward and have an impact down there so what player would you say you're going to base your game on the most like what so you just said Cripper and Nat Fife when you're drafted maybe a half forward is what everyone yeah. was saying but seeing you play a little bit of midfield time is there something Vossi sort of put into you being like we want you to play like this uh, there's no real specific kind of player we really want to play like it's just more I guess being a midfielder that can play down forward, like that's just the main real thing. He didn't really say, you know, you want you to play like Cripper, I want you to play like Nat Five. So he would still play my own game, but develop as that midfielder. 
that goes down forward. So Kat to me also said Ashton Moyer is like no one else. Mm. He's got he's got a versatile game. We'll take that. Thanks, Kat. Versatile, yeah, Cow's <laughs> Jack of all <laughs> trades. Jack of all trades. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Um he said that because you kick on both feet. And I want to discuss this as well because we skipped yeah. over it a little bit. But we yeah. that AFL video you're watching, mm-hmm. he's slotting goals from all parts of the pockets on both feet. And I know in your sample debut you kicked goals on both feet, set shots. Mm-hmm. What's the go behind this? How are you so good on the left? How are you so good on the right? Yeah, well, it's something I've been doing my whole life, pretty much. Like, literally, since the first time I started kicking a footy uh, with Dad, it was always just both feet. Uh, they grew up, Mum and Dad both grew up doing Taekwondo, so, and obviously they have to use both sides. So, oh. I think it might be a bit genetical, but um, obviously just worked on it heaps with Dad, and now it's, it's just been second second nature. Is it just the life. kicking, so, handballing? Yeah. handball, uh, both hands, like shoot basketball left hand right hand and it's just always something i've always wanted to do just make sure always using both sides of the body because ambidextrous it helps so. never let them know your next move i actually yeah. a little bit of research yeah, anything on my right side is fucked <laughs> so you know if i'm going to my right you know if i'm going on the right side you're gonna deck me it's a fake I did a bit of research. Your mum went to the Olympics for Taekwondo. She did? How'd you find that out? I don't yeah. mind that. D- digging deep. Fuck I'm digging up. very deep. Well, I actually yeah. been, um, been sitting outside your house lately. <laughs> <laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> I actually caught your phone and was scrolling through it in oh, the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check um, yeah. it as a security guard. <laughs> yeah. No, your mum went to the Olympics in 2000, yeah. which would have been... You weren't born. Uh, but nah. is there memorabilia at home? Is there stories she's told you? Nah. No, she hasn't really told us much, to be honest. Um, she threw out a lot of her Taekwondo stuff, but there's still so many at home like she was bloody good at taekwondo um obviously that's probably why she went to the olympics <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah but there is one thing that she did keep but she doesn't like it but our whole family loves it it's a photo of her kissing muhammad no muhammad ali kissing her on the cheek oh. and it's like it's so sick because obviously one of the greatest boxers of all time Mr. yeah butterfly like kissing my mum on the cheek it's just the like, fact that she got to meet him let alone yeah, yeah let alone yeah. the photo let alone yeah that's yeah, well, cool it on the cheek yeah, yeah. And that's the thing like it wasn't like mum just said that she, all, all she wanted was an autograph and he just gave her a cheeky peck and I'll give you one better <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly give you one better. it was almost Ashton Ali yeah, <laughs> yeah. not nearly but um <laughs> Mate, it could be floating <laughs> like a butterfly yeah, <laughs> yeah but that that's, that was pretty cool mum I think mum doesn't say she likes it but I reckon she does yeah it was, that's a crazy experience I wonder if um maybe at some point Maybe Margot Robbie comes to Carlton training and oh, gives Ashton a little peck on the cheek or something. But <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> imagine. T-, nice. T Swift comes back to Carlton training. <laughs> oh, don't do that. I love Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few questions getting fired about Taylor Swift I yeah. saw on Instagram. I'll oh, keep really? them for later. But oh, wow. so going from one um, sort of role model, obviously your mum doing Taekwondo, mm-hmm. to Michael Voss, who's <laughs> such a segment who's up. Who's <laughs> like, love to Vossy. <laughs> Think of Vossie's your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so no, guys, about, yeah. let's get serious, please. <laughs> From your mum to Michael Voss. <laughs> guys, let's get serious, please. Jeez. <laughs> um, so Michael Voss being your mentor, your coach, mm-hmm. um, how would you describe his leadership style uh, at the club? I mean, I love it personally. Like, he's got a really good balance uh, between um, kind of... Re- he's got a really good sense of reading situations, if that kind of makes sense. So... Mm-hmm. Let's say if I stuff up, I make a bad kick, or um, he kind of knows whether whether to spray it, like spray me, or spray the team, or do something, or just say, "Look, it's all right, move on." Like you know, click. That's one thing he's really big on, and he's moving on quickly from mistakes. And um, I just love the way he coaches. Um, he's hard, you know, sets really high standards. Uh, that's what we expect of ourselves. And yeah, he's just unbelievable. Has he yeah. given you like a massive spray yet, or has he given someone? Like you've seen any of the new boys yeah, spray yet? Seen you give not, yet. Like not really. No, I do you reckon he's do you reckon he's getting a look? No, I hope he doesn't come and left right good night at me at some point because he's a scary man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. was a very scary man on the footy field. But there was a video go out yesterday of him crying when he said Zach Williams going to be playing his first game back. Not spraying mm. the first years. Do you reckon Vossi's just got a little bit of a soft spot in his he, heart now? He's oh. a fucking pussy. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, no, you no, can punch no, him. Don't no, punch no, me. No, that, that's not. getting you. Say, get off my mic, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. That's so bad. I wasn't going to go that far. I just said maybe he's become a little bit, a little bit no, more cuddly. Well, that's it. In that, I think I started to tear up. I think the whole team probably started to because obviously it's a big moment for Zachy. Uh, he's been out for I think 18 months or something and he's had and a few of them before as well so he's missed yeah. a lot of footy he's been he's been really good to us first years as well like, I know for me personally he's always checking up how are you mate especially during training if I don't understand something I ask him a question he's, always, he's straight onto it um, and to see him come back obviously play through the VFL 
last week and play such a bloody good game because he is such a good player. And to see him, you know, show how much it means to him to get back and play AFL level, it got everyone, to be honest. And there's a reason why Vossi got a bit, a bit, a bit emotional because the whole, the whole team did pretty much, yeah. so... No, it's good. We've seen well, a little, we've seen a little, I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've seen a little bit of a different side of Vossi, so this is good. Yeah. He's getting a little bit um, showing his true, not true colours, I guess. He just was such a scary man in his footy days. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Just showing thought, that he's human, pretty much. Pretty much. Like, yeah. He, um, he's been limping around the footy field. Is there something going on there? Have you been teeing him up at training or anything? Who's this Vossi? Yeah. Has he been, I haven't seen him. He was around. limping to the huddle the other day. I mean, we were discussing. He doesn't yes. bend his left knee. I don't know whether it's because he's hit too many oh, contests. Really? Oh, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. you seen his highlights? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen plenty of pretty them. Pretty fair, yeah. pretty fair. Does he join in on training at all? Does he get in, get involved, get nah, a tackle bag or anything? He would bully the shit out of us. <laughs> See, I imagine if he's on the bumper bag, I would not go on that group. I'll tell you that much. Like, Bit of one on one, and the ball gets kicked up, and you yeah, just have to. Not a chance. No, <laughs> no, no, no chance. You can have that one. <laughs> so Zachy Williams, obviously playing round one, uh, opening round, like you've just said. I know there's a lot of Carlton fans out there that want to know where you are at. Is there? Any little exclusive insight to where your AFL journey is starting? I mean, I don't even have much indication of where I'm, I guess I'm really at, whether I'm a chance to debut at some stage, but I'm not really focused on that at the moment. I'm really just focused on, um, you know, just trying to build my game, as I was saying before, with getting some more midfield minutes, uh, improve my forward craft, and just really trying to improve my game, be more versatile, so I can really earn, earn that spot in the team at some stage. Learn, learn, learn. Yeah, pretty um, much, yeah. Well, you sort of touched a little bit in the before about how, what sort of player you're going to be and how Carlton maybe you're learning play midfield craft. But like when you come into the team, what do you sort of expect? What do you reckon you'll be doing at Carlton? Oh, uh, is, is in p- positional, positional, like, and what's your sort of, role? yeah, what's your role when you, this in 2024? Yeah, it might grow in the future where you become a mid middle, yeah. but at the moment, it'd just be that medium, medium forward, uh, just trying to be that. I guess that annoying defender. I mean, not defender, annoying. Pressure uh, forward. forward, yeah, that hates that defenders hate really playing on pretty much. That um, you know, can crumb for H and Charlie, or can mark if they're not there. Just uh, just trying to be. Is it I almost like you? Because Jack Silvani's obviously it's very unfortunate that he's out for this season. Is that a spot in the team that you're trying to not take as your own, but sort of trying to fill that role um, as that medium to tallish forward um, that has good hops because I know you can fucking take a specky and yeah. all that good well, stuff I try to but, um, yeah. but yeah potentially uh, I mean I guess it really just depends on the opposition that's my I don't really know too much about a lot of the in season stuff obviously it's my, f- my first time so <laughs> I don't really understand I guess a lot of the tactics um, I guess that Voss you might be thinking of depending on might be the opposition whether they're a small forward line whether you want to play tall play small because there's so many forward options obviously you've still got Jack Martin uh, Matty Owies Corey Durden like there's just so many good forwards um, that can take any spot I guess that's the good thing about our forward line is it's really versatile can play a really tall team can play a small team can play a bit of both and I think it just probably just depend on the opposition or what's available such a niche road question but how tall are you? Uh, 188 188 you said 187 on your draft profile yeah, and then you came up to us up. I got really stitched up there I reckon you came uh, up to us at Carlton when you lost your phone I was like He's taller than me. Yeah, he's getting... He's actual he always gets shot taller. up. Yeah, at the combine, I got stitched up. Like, that said, I was confidently 188. Like, I had mm. to be. And they had me down as 186. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're joking. Like, that's two centimetres. Two like, centimetres is like, a lot. I it's asked massive. To re-measure. <laughs> I, I had to re- ask to re-measure like four times. They said, no. Nah. Fucking... Was it the hair not spiking up or something? No, nah, it must have been just flat. <laughs> it, must, it had to have been. They just pressed down on my head. Oh, Where my was God. the combine for you? Was it in Melbourne you come across yeah, that one? Yeah, MCG, Sometimes so. they do a little bit of testing in Adelaide as well. I had a bit of an excuse. We, we sat on a plane for an hour, so I was kind of shrinking in the plane and like yeah. little stuff like that, so that's probably why. By the sun, it was on a different trajectory, <laughs> yeah. like Mercury's yeah. in retrograde and all that stuff, so it's probably yeah. a bit smaller. Exactly. Yeah. Or, yeah. Before I jump off, because Shrey's going to jump in, uh, producer Shrey is going to jump in and ask some questions. Um, I want to talk about Adelaide because we had Ari from Tasmania on the pod, Colton from WA on the pod. You're the first SA draftee we've had, which is mine and Shrey's hometown. And we've moved to Melbourne midway through last year and you've moved here probably just a couple months after us. Yeah, pretty much. What's it been like coming from Adelaide to Melbourne? What's been the biggest changes you've noticed in Melbourne lifestyle? 
bloody traffic. Obviously, it was this this morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I couldn't. You can't get anywhere without um bloody traffic. Like, yeah. take one wrong turn, it takes an extra fifteen minutes. Like, yeah, it's crazy. It's, like, that's the like, that's the main thing. It's crazy. Much. I've moved out of the the marmalade house uh, off the couch, and <laughs> I live what should be a five minute drive um to their place. 15, 20 minutes these Jesus days, Christ, yeah. especially in peak hour. It's, yeah, yeah, it's nuts. In Adelaide, I always say to people, if something's like 15 kilometres away, it's like a 15 minute drive. Yeah, exactly. Like but, I, I used to live 10 kilometres from the city and it was 10 minutes to get to Adelaide over. Like it was always just like a kilometre per minute. Yeah, it's easy. Here, so. Will's house is literally like two kilometres away, 15 minute transit. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, uh, that's probably the difference. Is there any, anything else you've noticed, like moving into Melbourne and moving out of home and everything that's sort of yeah a bit it's, different it's and just out, always out, something to do like that's you, the good thing about it have like, you got a coffee order because melbourne it's coffee culture it is have you got like a bougie coffee order or are you well i pretend to like coffee <laughs> like especially in front of all the boys i always have an almond latte that's why yeah. <laughs> but then i'll just sneakily say i was like hot chocolate yeah <laughs> that'd be, that'd be smart nice. <laughs> yeah. like but um no i don't i don't mind it actually don't mind coffee um mom dad gave me their old coffee machine just at home so i have one every now and then but I love a good hot chocolate. You've been back home much? Nah, not too much. I went back for the Chrissy break. Uh, good to see family, friends. Went down the road for New Year's, all the mates, and uh, went back, came back here, and actually surprised my family, actually, a couple, oh, month, maybe a month ago now, I reckon. Just uh, just because we had a four-day break, and just surprised them, which is cool, but yeah, I haven't been back since. So just trying to save flights and stuff. And true, true. Save it for gather round. Yeah. Save it for when Carlton go across and play out that over when you can get a gig in the ones there. Oh, that'd be nice. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. Imagine they unleash Ashton yeah. gather round. And how's this? So we're, that'd be dirty. I think we're training at Glenelg too. So you know how all the oh, huge clubs train. Yeah. The boys. You better so show them, show them the, yeah. the, the, the red carpet. The, yeah. the boys coming home. So Ashton and Sam Dirt and are coming yeah. back. Yes. <laughs> that'd be so sick. So oh, that's awesome. Trying to this is Ashton's that. pocket and this is Sam's goal square where he's a golden fist goal everything. Yeah. Uh, he's bloody good. You see, you saw him on the weekend? He's All pushing for week. a ones case. Yeah, definitely. Like I want to get him on the pod, but I feel like if he gets in the ones, he'd be too big for us. Nah, nah. you would be too hard to get him. Just, trust. I used to play footy with Sam Durden's twin brother. Does he have a twin? Twin brother. Is it twin or is it uh, younger brother? I'm pretty sure they're twins. Younger brother. Does he have, I, I, got, I get lost. There's so many twins. We were talking about the Campos before at Glenelg. I think he's slightly younger. I'm going to say it's twin. Might be. Who's he playing it's, it's twin because there's a st- I, I'll tell this story. We should say it for the Sam Durden pod, but they got given wristwatches one year, like Fitbits. Go and do your running programs over summer. We're tracking your heart rate so we know if you go out on the piss. We're tracking your heart rate, so if you're not doing your, your physical activity, we'll be able to see it all. Yeah. They stopped doing that. You're not allowed to do that now in AFL clubs. You're not allowed to track off club hours. Yeah. Um, but he went back home, and he wanted to go out to this mate's 21st, so he gave his twin brother his wristwatch, said, can you go do my running? Oh, no. Because <laughs> our heart rates are very similar. We're same height, same weight, yeah. everything, and I'll go to the party. <laughs> That's class. And that's got good. got a few hours away from his wristwatch, that's and then class. no one had ever said anything about it. And that's that's, good. that's Dirt's younger brother. Dirt's, is, I'm pretty or, sure it's his twin. I'm, I'm pretty whatever, sure it's yeah. his twin because there was always this gag of one plays AFL and one plays Div Twelve Resis. Oh no, so, that's, that's class. That's that's uh, shout out to Mark Durden, very good man. <laughs> <laughs> the better Durden. Does he have Does he have the mole as well? No, nah, they look very different. Oh, they look really? very different. Oh wow. But, yeah, okay. uh, and they play very different, of course, because. Oh, well, yeah, because obviously one <laughs> one's professional. Yeah, Mark's professional. Yeah, Mark's professional. The other one plays a cup. Righto, feedback. Trey's here. He's doing I'm stuff. Here. I'm He's excited stuff. to be here. Right. It's uh, really hot in here too, guys, just letting <laughs> you know. So uh, it's just really sweaty. Ashton, our dams blew up mm-hmm. with questions for you. So we're going to have to narrow it down a little yeah. bit, but yeah. Trey and I have handpicked a few. Yeah. Uh, Schrader, hit us up. Well, I like this one. I'm a big music man myself, you know. I love my country. Um, Asher Rayleigh asks... What's it going to work out song? You said T Swift before. Has it always yeah. been T Swift or have you ch- chopping and changing? I've well, since, oh, what was it, year three, I reckon? Mm. Or year four, when 1989 got released. Track. Absolutely. That was when I, year four, that was like when I first started like loving Taylor Swift. Our whole class, yeah. we love Taylor Swift. And yeah, it's definitely Taylor Swift now. I love her. <sighs> Very nice. Yep, hot topic mm. at the moment too. I waited in line for three hours to get um, merch Sort-y. from my sister. Jesus. Did you hot. end up getting it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. eight hundred dollars worth. Eight hundred. Yeah, yeah. Oh my. A lot God. of merch. Oh, just worth, a, worth it though. Hot day. Too. Just a whole, oh, just a whole month's pay. <laughs> yeah, no <Jeez>. more. <laughs> Four or five months worth. Of, <laughs> worth I've of got it. um, I've got one from the big bad fish here. Uh, any secret talents outside footy? Obviously, you said you do a bit of taekwondo. Is there any like little niche things that you do? Yeah, well, I didn't do taekwondo. I sucked at it. But um, <laughs> well, I played basketball growing up uh, as well. Like my younger brother's a big basketballer. Um, 
that's probably that I didn't really do anything else other than that any of the boys call him Scotty Pendlebury at Calvin <laughs> bloody <laughs> basketball no, well, we got Matty Owies he went to college so he's the oh, he's the basketball where did he go to college uh, he did three years at Hawaii then a year Hawaii. at Seattle I think it was a year. How? I feel three, like three he's one, rather sure. short to play basketball. Point guard. It'd be a good point guard. Is, is, how tall good. is he? Is he six? Six foot? Uh, no, he's not six. It's not. I, I, <laughs> he's I'm, not six. I'm, I'm, I'm a comfortable 5'9 with shoes on 5'10. And I, I reckon he'd be about the same. Yeah, about same I played a year of social basketball. I didn't score a point. Oh, yes. really? Yeah, bad, bad year to be me. Yeah, Actually, it's a bad year to be me every year. Let's have a look here. That's this. All right, we've got Jack Castles. If you're kicking for goal on the siren, after the siren, sorry, which foot are you using? Directly in front. Uh, yeah, Ooh. let's go. Let's, let's go, go 35 out slight angle to the right. Yeah. To the right, I keep left foot. Left foot. So it depends on which side depends you are. Depends on which side I'm on. It. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Anything I, I can handball left handed like pretty comfortably. My left foot, chop it off. Yeah. Not <laughs> not <laughs> useful my, at all. My right foot's still a double handed ball drop. I've tried to mm. do the one handed ball drop, but it's just like. Oh, you a lefty. Yeah, I'm a lefty. Oh, I'll be right. Oh, mate, oh, I love wheeling onto the yeah, left. It's just, what you can't do it so, it's just so I'll sexy like when you kick it. Uh, we've got a question in from Corey Durden. Oh, one of the great men oh. from my neck what? of the woods. <laughs> um, we've got Izzy Elias. Who has been the best role model for you at Carlton so far? Um, Harry Mackay has been really good for mm. me. Um, obviously, both play forward. Uh, do a lot of vision with him. Uh, obviously, do a lot of catch-up coffee. Uh, a lot of the time and uh, he's been yeah really really good Great Harry writer. lives near me I think it's Harry yeah but I don't know it could be it wait where about you in Turak just say your house oh, address say your home address yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll send you some letters and stuff yeah it's um yeah he <laughs> <laughs> I saw him walking the dog and I'm like was okay. it Harry or Ben do you know if well was... I don't know I really yeah, don't know. know I feel like it's pretty far to live from to live play for Carlton and live near here. Not here, but live near where you live. Wait, where's but Turek? I have no idea where that is. Like, Ten minutes from here. Yeah, not far from here. Oh, okay. It's over a bridge or two. But then North oh, Melbourne's yeah. pretty far from here too. No, it's Essendon. Essendon it's now. Telmarine. Yeah, that's even further. Yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be. It so, had yeah. to be Harry then. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes could, sense. It couldn't have been Ben. My boy. Let's go Harry find his house. Let's get up the front. The big fella. I've yeah, got a say question. I got, this is from me. Who are you living with at the moment? Uh, Rob Monaghan. Oh, He's, okay, um, so it's you Irish two boys. Yeah, so it's just yeah. us. And uh, we've got Matt Carroll moving in as well. Oh, which, no, will be, <laughs> which will be very, very interesting. But, oh, uh, my. I'm very looking forward to Party it. Party house. Fun as. Yeah. Look out. It'll be so very funny. How'd yeah. that get set up? So I know when the boys get drafted, usually yeah. some of them move in, like Colton Tholstrop's living with... um. Some it was some someone that it did was it with the Jack club. Viney and then now uh, yeah, it's like a was, staff from the club. Yeah, the oh, staff member. Oh wow, <laughs> what are you doing? But yeah, how'd that get set up? Do the does the club house you together, or do you just sort of go off on your own door? Uh well, yeah, it was pretty much organised through the club. Yeah. So me and Rob, we stayed with uh, Lewis Young for the first ah, beautiful couple months, and he was really really good. Um, lived in Newport, mm. so like. What, 20, 25 away from the club with traffic, probably 50. Like, uh, longer than that, like, oh, It wouldn't have been 50, nah, it's a bit, of, bit of a drag. But, um, yeah, he was really, really good. Uh, he's kind of like our dad. So, we yeah. have a bit, a bit of a joke. He calls me son, I call him dad. Mm. But, um, yeah, I lived with him. Then me and Rob moved into our own house uh, near Ascot Vale, which is pretty cool. Mm. So, nice little just place us too. That's really good. Very so. nice. Very independent. Right, should we move on? Because that was my last question. I had. That was your last question. Cause it, always, right. it always intrigues me about people, how people live, like, yeah. which is weird. Mm. All right, I've got one more question, and it's from our good friends at Blue Abroad. Oh, yes. Lovely podcast. Uh, what's been your biggest life lesson to date? Biggest life oh, that's lesson? Deep. Wow, that's a great question. Life lesson. Um, does it have to be... Oh, f- I guess Could it's be still anything. footy related, I guess. Um, related. Probably just listening to my body. That's probably been the main thing. Mm. I know that took a big, big hit on my draft year, not listening to my body, um, trying to play through play through injuries and mm. obviously that really derailed my um my draft stocks and just being able to listen to my body and listen to doctors and little stuff like that was yeah probably a big thing yeah nice yeah, I like it. my body always tells me to give up so <laughs> I just do that anyway it's not often you, yeah it's not often you hear AFL players um saying that because you hear about like Dale Morris playing a grand final with a broken rib players yeah. on like several different types of medications just to get up for a game like yeah jabbing the hamstring yeah. jabbing the calf yeah. yeah it's not often you hear like a player just saying fucking just need to listen to I'm just cooked Do yeah. you, boys yeah. if you're sore it's okay to be sore no yeah. shame right, especially because it, right. it, it was pretty early in the year and I had that whole year to yeah. to get through like it wasn't like if it was for a grand final 
different story. Yeah, yeah it's, different story. it's a very different story. I'd like jab every I needed to yeah. to, to, to get when up you're playing for that round game three against Norwood. And he's like, come on, man, we no. <laughs> <laughs> have yeah. a week off, boys. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Basil. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to AFL 1170. We've got Shrey on the desk mm-hmm. for this segment, and we're talking to Ashton Moyer. Fun fact, actually, bumped into Dermy during the week. He, yes, um, we did. Saw him at a PR event. Hot um, Shot PR. We yeah, were at their, their was, launch. Dermy was there. He had a very nice shirt on, a lot baby blue shirt. Baby blue T-shirt, some boot-cut jeans, and he's... RMs or were they boat shoes? I'm not sure. I didn't look at his feet. I'm not weird <laughs> like that. <laughs> I was yes, looking, looking, at at looking at a million so. bucks. Um, so this week on AFL 1170, we asked people, what are your footy red flags? Yep. So I'm thinking, oh, what I would say is my biggest one is, you know, um, AFL players come out, they've got their long sleeve on. Me, mm-hmm. the check man, love a long sleeve. I don't like when you come out with your long sleeve on and you decide a quarter time, I'm a bit of a coward and it's too hot, I'm taking it off. Not right. okay. You keep it on. You've decided to wear it. Be a man, grow, grow a pair, and just keep on the long sleeve. Do you like it when people roll up the th- sleeves three That's quarter? even worse. Okay. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can give it a one-two cuff, mm-hmm. but I don't want to see any white around the wrist. I want to see, you know, you cuff it a little bit. But who is it at Melbourne that wears it? Is it Ed Langdon? Ed Langdon. Don't like it. Three-quarter three length. Yeah. Yeah. I just butt in here. Trey took a long sleeve off. First game he played with a long sleeve, but it was forty six degrees. <laughs> it was. Well, that makes sense. As long as yeah. it's not rolled up. Like no, that, I had it there. Yeah. 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 If a you want to roll your long sleeve up, just wear a t shirt. You know, I say, yeah. can I wear a t shirt? Because that <laughs> you know, you look silly either way. Can I wear my Kmart tie underneath? Same yeah. color. Um, Ashton, do you have any red flags in footy? I've really thought about that to be completely honest. Like, what do you but, see at the club oh. that you just do like? Oh, come on. Yeah. Or do you see like a fan do it and you're like, oh, mate, come. I have really seen any. I mean, personally, I'm not a big uh, long sleeve wearer. Mm. I'm not a I'm not a huge real fan, especially we'll, in pre-season. We'll change that. We'll like, change that. Yeah, pre-season. If someone's wearing the, the pre-season long sleeve, I'm not really a pre-season, not sure about that. It's probably 30 degrees. Yeah, so yeah that's fair. That's no, where exactly. you got to... But when it's raining at GMHBA Stadium, you take it off. I'm like, yeah. what's the point, boys? Yeah. It's and it's 4.40 yeah. on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And you're wondering, why did you go all the way down to GMHBA to watch footy? Um <laughs> 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 we put it out to we put it out to the listeners, and we've got a few responses here. Uh, we mad Collingwood su- supporter over here, Sonia XOXO going to going for any team that is not Collingwood. Man, that's well, shocking. Take. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's, that's rubbish. I'm yeah. not sure. Nice. That. I mean, I, want, I didn't mind it like last year when Jacob got picked up. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't mind, but now, nah. Nah, who cares? Nah. That's a that's a red your, flag. That, that, that yeah, there's, there's a red flag. Yeah, that's mm. the one. Red yeah. flag. I need your opinion yeah. on socks, Ashton. Yep. Are you uh, socks down with the long socks or are you the ankle socks or the midway What sort of socks are you wearing when you're playing? Oh, well, we have long socks. Okay, but no I'm, short socks. No, I do, I do like, you know those medium ones? The, the medium ones, ones I wore them all last year. I like them. Like They're, yeah. they're comfy. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think you have to be a certain calibre of player to have your socks up. So I like to think yeah. Patrick Danger was a Brownlow medalist. Who Buddy else Frank, had the socks Buddy up? Buddy Franklin. Yeah. Was Buddy Jason, had the socks up. Jason Horn Francis, does he wear his socks up? His socks are up, but I think he's going to be there. I think we'll get to the point where oh, he's yeah. one of the well, best yeah. in the comp. Because he is, I reckon at the end of this year, he'll yeah. be like... Yeah. Riley Sanders had the socks up. You know, I yeah. think that is like, I believe in myself, he, I'm going to be that good. No, nah, he he's, looks at He says yeah, that. It yeah. suits he, some people, but you know, I don't... Riley Sanders is just warming the baby the baby cows down. And they look good, don't they? They look they very, very yeah. good. Yeah. Um. So that was Finn Parkey and... Keenan Dalton they said asking the both, both questions they were asking wow. do you like them high or do you like them low yeah. no, um, we've got the boys from the Back Pocket Banter podcast saying people who wear headbands when their hair isn't even that long so would you say Jordan Boyd's hair is not long enough for a headband nah his, his hair can get in his eyes though in the it's, eyes. It's, it's more about whether it gets in your eyes yeah like, pretty much and even if it's just here it gets bloody annoying just above your eyebrows it's yeah. a bit of a pain in the ass but most definitely yeah. like it. Have you ever considered wearing a headband trail? I used to wear headbands. I have really long hair. Yeah. Like I used to have, you know, yeah. I don't know, if maybe you're a bit too old as well, but we had the hair colour like this. We had the side. I don't know what I even called it. It was the side. So yeah, like, no, I like it. Yeah. And I had really long. It would have been to my shoulders. So I had to put the headband oh. on. But oh, I didn't get the long. touch of the footy, so it didn't matter what I looked like. Can we get Trey's mum to send in a photo of Emo Shrey and we'll put on the, My mum has photos. I'll actually, we'll, we'll post one. Yeah, we'll put it on the Sorry socials. Check has got one. For us, and this is what I wholeheartedly agree with. Blokes who wear the skins to footy training with no shorts over the top. Yeah, what is that? I don't, don't get, get it. it. Yeah, I, that you're wearing, you're basically, you basically well, yeah, you can well, see yeah. the you can see the piece. Yeah, you know, exactly. you've got a nice I, piece. Might as well just train naked. Like, I don't well. agree with this. You're wearing I, jocks, mate. There's a yeah. long jocks. 
Yeah, so yeah, I wear my, literally. I'm not wearing shorts over my skins because it's it's just extra stuff to wear. No, but you wear the long. I wear long skins, uh, like the the pants when it's cold. So yeah. the footage on the top would be no different. And if you were in the long skins, are you wearing jocks underneath? Yes. But then you just wear a second pair of jocks. Yeah, no, that's true. No, I don't. Skins are skins. Are, uh, skins are there to warm your legs and keep them no. keep them warm. Yeah, well, I don't, the and then I, what then are, I what is, what's the point of the shorts? I'm at the I'm training with you know the local footy, and then I see see some bloke pace. I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a real tight gun. It, ma- it just makes don't fucking look down there, man. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I can just see it. It's there to look at. <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy some long skins. Um, I've got a pair because I've got some. Oh, I've got a pair too from under eights. Yeah, to see if it still fits. Actually, <laughs> this is a weird thing. I have a pair of long the the skins at the shirt. They're from my under thirteen. They're a size small. Still fit me. Still tight wow. squeeze. Wow. Check man wore the other day and he goes, Why is, do you have a size small? I said, It still fits the. I'm slimming down, it still fits me. The little Nike dry fit job. <laughs> yeah. um, we've got one in from Tyler Watts. Oh, what's he? Oh, I used to play footy with Tyler. Oh. Uh, blokes who wear two different types of boots, as in different colours. Fair enough if you've lost one, but people think they're trying to be trendy. Now, this is There's different an issue to here. what. Ashton is wearing. No, he's wearing two different coloured Crocs no, in the studio yes. currently. That's okay. Play on. I think mm-hmm. there's an issue here. I think Tyler thinks that the blokes are wearing these two coloured boots. They come as a pack. There's shoes. We have these Puma yeah. shoes. They come as two different colours. They're not wearing Mitch Mash coloured sh- boots. It, you know, they're two different boots. They would be uncomfortable on your feet. They'd be a different feel. So you get boots that are different colour. Is it different if you've bought like a pair of boots and it's you've bought a blue pair and you've bought an orange pair and you want to swap them over? No, you can't do that. No, you can't, no, do, no, that. can't do that. But for example, if you get a pair of, you know, NBA players, they wear two different coloured shoes but mm. they come like that yeah, yeah that's, that's they've the been, been yeah. designed like there's, there's puma sh- like the sneakers puma, that yeah like, we've got them a, yeah there's a red yeah no, the red, red and, and the blue, blue one, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay oh that makes sense if you're yeah, swapping those, them if you're swapping them maybe not i don't like it those ones that dusty used to wear the blue and the pink um, yeah it was like faded oh not yeah. faded the it was a little bit dry color but yeah, yeah. Mm. that's okay if you I mean, it's dusty martin he can do whatever he wants pretty much if you're playing local footy and you're going out and you're purchasing two pairs of boots and yeah no not okay with me not okay nah all right, Trey. Yeah. All right. No, this one's this one's good. Mitch James says, "Reckons Dad's standing up at halftime. This is wrong, Mitch. Standing up at halftime is wow. important because my bum is numb from sitting on the yeah, bad seats to. at the G. You got to like, circulate not the blood standing through up. your legs. Yeah, it's exactly. all I'm yeah. saying. You know, Mitch, your, your toes get numb. You get pins and needles. You have to stand up at mm-hmm. halftime. Mitch, exactly. that's a red flag on you, my brother. Mitch, you're banned from listening to the podcast, Mitch. Yeah. If I see you listening, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> um." I've got one last one here. Um, we've got Cooper's fishing adventures, ball hogs. I don't know what that is. I don't get the footy enough to be a ball hog. So yeah. you know what? If you, can, if you can find the footy, mate, like have like you know have fair crack. Because if if I could get the footy more than three times a game, I would yeah. hold on to that thing like it's my first ball. <laughs> I'd consider myself a ball hog. Yeah. No, well, what's a ball hog? I think a ball hog is if you get, if you get the footy sp- sparsely. It's funny as because there was one time in junior football. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Here. Oh, there was one time in junior football we were playing. A, uh, we played a game. Um, and I kicked kicked my first bag of four. Oh, felt, like, felt like a legend. Um, and we finished the game and everyone's like, Fuck, you're a bit of a ball hog um, today. I'm like, no, I just kicked four snags. <laughs> yeah, what that's, yeah, what yeah. do you want from me? Two I, weeks later, one bloke goes and kicks nine and they're like, you're a legend. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God, you're so awesome. And they cheered him off. <laughs> yeah, they cheered him off. <laughs> Where's the ball hog there? Yeah. Well. No, I think you're a ball hog if you don't get the footy a lot and you get done holding the bowl a lot. So you tuck the pill under your arm, and then some bloke just smashes into you. You're not the f- yeah. you're not given the first one. Yeah, first use. You're gonna yeah. give the first use. First use. Yeah, don't mind. It's the eye contact. If you're mm. looking at it and you're open, yeah. and they don't give it to you. Mm. Yeah. If you U turn in traffic sure. and get done, you're a ball hog. Yeah, yeah. ball hog. Because you can give it to the quarterback out the back, but mm. now you think bit of me or time here. It could be if you're in the pocket and there's someone in the goal square. Uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's fucked. Yeah, yeah. I'm not having. If that. you don't handball over the top, yeah, I hate that when you know a big key four gets a mark and you got you maybe. You go, you know, Jackie Higgins running into the square. You don't mm. give the hands? Yeah. Mm. Brother. You're kicking 50 goals a year. Higgins needs a couple more. Yeah. yeah. He's hit his goal bonus. You know, get a bit of cash. Mm. So, Cuba Fishing Adventures, I hope that um, I hope that's yeah. <laughs> uh, answered your question. We went there. really deep on that. Sorry, yeah, guys. <laughs> we just, I don't get the foot enough to be considered a bow hog. Mm. I went three times last year without touching the red thing, actually. So. That hits that's home same. a little bit. 
Michael Matcher mm. though. There we go. I went, right, you, I went a couple games. I really? Been that a couple fucking games. sucks. Mm. And then all your mates just really get on your back and make funny videos about you and then <laughs> everybody reckons you're the worst footy player ever. So <laughs> What? That's never happened. <laughs> I swear, man. He's right though, to be fair. All right, what's on for the week, Will? Well, we're wrapping it up now, but um, Jar and I are playing cricket finals. Exciting. We would be playing with you boys, but uh, you're going up to the Gold Coast. Don't hear about it, mate. You know, I'm, you know, booking the catch flights, not feelings, brother. I don't want to hear about it. I'm busy. I'm booked tell, and busy, man. Uh, tell the listeners what you're doing in the Gold Coast. Oh, mate, we're just going up. And, you know, watching footy. Uh, we can't release oh, too much. Nice. We're going up to see the Suns play, and they're playing the Richmond Tigers. So it's the Damien Hardwick Cup. It's also the Jacob Townsend Cup. Ah. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to watch some footy, That'd see the good. boys train. Um. Uh, Oh, yes, we're going on the Rory Atkins podcast. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm excited to oh, go on Chats with Rat. Chats with Rat. Dills, mate. Well, he's, Rory Atkins. he's one of my most underrated Crows players ever. Yeah, so, he was good, eh? I'm so what are you going to do when you first see him? Shake his hand and. I might just kiss my lips. <laughs> 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 no, I'm excited to go up there. We haven't been to the Gold Coast since we went for the Tim Zoo fight. Kavalav, Ripley's, believe it or not. Yes, that place scares me, so I'm not going to go in there. Are you going to go Hog's Breath? That's the close down. I will be going to the. Dodgy Barn Me place on Cavalab that sells Vietnamese baguettes. Baguettes? He gave me food poisoning last time, I'm pretty sure. Very, well, very So maybe the second time's a charm. Well, hopefully Jarrah and I can get the dub for you boys. So when you come back from the GC, there is a lot of talk about selection for you boys coming yeah, into I the I hope so final. because, well, a few weeks ago, Ash, I took three I took three for... Yeah, I did that. I clean oh, the yeah. tail? Did I clean up the tail? Yes, it was, you know, <laughs> it was the number eight, the number 10, number 11. Fair enough, you know, but three's for mm. three for... If Nathan exactly. Lyon took three, mate, you'd, they'd be, you know, ticket tape parade. They call three takes three. He doesn't get to play the next week. <laughs> they they say, you know, back to twelfth man for you, you big flog. I'm like, well, fuck. They call Mitchell Stark the mop because he just comes in and takes yeah. a lazy oh. four for which is just the tail. But yeah. I feel like oh, every yeah. team needs a mop. I also got out for one run, so that probably didn't help. Uh, <laughs> is that the same game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we were mid collapse, and I did throw my wicket away, <laughs> but. You have to expect that when you know I'm the lead spinner. I can't use the stick anymore. The lead spinner. <laughs> oh, that's very good from you, Shrey. Ashton, thanks for coming thank on the pod, so mate. Um, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah what, what have do you, you have on this what week? Have you this got week? on this week? Uh, well, got a game tomorrow. Tomorrow night, playing Coburg trial game. Mm. It should be fun. I've um, been in Coburg before. It's a bit scary. Is it? Well, yeah. lucky it's at Icon. So. Oh, sorry. Be, uh, no worries. Icon's lovely. Yeah. Can you give your midfield some advice, like Clary? Yeah, yeah. you got any midfield advice? Mm. Um. Oh, you should was Who? Oh, I'm playing midfield. Will, shut yeah. your mouth. All right? <laughs> keep, keep it quiet over there, brother. <sighs> midfield, you um, if you think you're tired, just keep running, brother. Just keep running. You're not tired. That's what my coach told me the other yeah, day. Wow. He goes, you're only as tired as you think you, as you think you are. I said, no, mate, I can't breathe. Yeah. I <laughs> physically cannot breathe. <laughs> so, yeah, just keep running because apparently that's how you get the footy. All right, I write that on my wrist. On my, yeah. on my tape that I go, yeah. I'll, I'll keep write running. that down. Keep running. Keep running. Just keep running. Because I just write like time. chocolate milk and my girlfriend's name on my wrist, so that's way better than <laughs> me. Chocolate milk. <laughs> yeah, my um my tip would be just stand the attacking side, and if they mm, get on their attacking side, fuck, there. not much you can do. Let um <laughs> yeah, let someone else run back there. Yeah. yeah, I don't know who else is back there, but let them deal with it. Is there a sweeper? Is that what they do? They uh, sweep up. It's a sweeper. Yeah, yeah. You I'm not sure. Sweeper hit two. Reader, I think. Or something yeah, like that. Yeah, no, like the quarterback. Yeah. Who's the quarterback? So this is weird. No one knows this, but when we went to the Rich, well, who did Richmond play? Was it the practice match that Richmond played? Oh. Uh, Richmond Pies. Richmond Pies. Um, oh, I was we're, by the Pogue, we were um, for your game, mm. and Kevin the Magnatosh is Richmond's quarterback. So when there's a stoppage say in the pocket, and oh. it's like a ruck throw in whatever, they hit it back to him, and he calls quarterback, and he calls plays, which is really strange. Wow. Okay. Like so, I think one of them was for Nate Smith to go to the square and then double back oh what the so hell? I'm not sure what the name of it was but he doubled back three or four times before he got the ball oh, this really should have been part of AFL 1170 yeah I, I didn't so he should pull apart the well, fucking I, Richmond Tigers I don't think much of it but I thought he said something I don't remember what it was but he's called quarterback and then he said like a phrase oh. and Naismith I wasn't watching the footy because stuff like that I'm watching Sam Naismith and he's gone up back up back up back and then it's got to him he's taking a mark wow I have to report that back to the coaches for next <laughs> yeah, week tell, <laughs> tell Bossy that'll be five grand thanks <laughs> so I'm, I'm gobsmacked wow, that is huge Shrey that is unreal footy analysis that is very impressive I know we're not very serious about our footy around here but hey, that hello, was SEN hello <laughs> that was awesome oh my god Ashton, thank you so much for coming on the pod, mate. Yeah, really thank you very much. much. You. We're really excited to watch your footy journey, uh, watch you become that next big midfielder, breaking out of packs, jumping on blokes and all that good stuff. 
Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thank you so much. Look, Shay, you can. Oh, it's been a long time, guys. Out. I haven't signed us off in forever. Yes. I'm back. This feels good. Thanks again for listening, guys. Please rate us five stars wherever you get your podcasts Spotify, Apple Music, um, you know, through your emails, whatever else you get it from. Um, <laughs> on Spotify, is it the bell? Click the bell. And then when we post it, we're posting at normal times. We're not posting at 3 a.m. anymore. No. When you hit the bell, you. You get notified when you come, and you can be the first listener. And if you're the first listener, send it to me on Instagram, and I put it on my story. Yeah. I put it on my story. That doesn't sound like a really important thing, no, but I, I'm sure you'll appreciate yeah, it. Huge. Lots of appreciation. And on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, send it to your mum, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.